show you these things. Um, Corporal Glyn Wilkinson and Sergeant Steve Forrest, they're two of our guys that really did the coordination today to put this together for you. So a big thank you to them and also thank you to all the blues that you see that have been working hard to uh, run a flying program and also run this day. So um, it's a very busy day. And thank you guys, thanks for you coming to this event. You wouldn't even touch how excited I am right now. I mean, I just got the mic handed to me by Brian Cox, he's one of my heroes. <laughs> Following me is one of my other heroes, an actual proper legend, as in, not like you're a legend on Twitter, like you say to your mates, an actual legend, Andy Green. I mean, this is incredible. This, That's your experience... It's, it's something I very strongly believe in, of course. I mean, it's, it's my field, it's what I decided to go into. <laughs> But I now, having sort of worked in this field for 20 years, I've seen the, the almost crisis that we had, certainly at last, a few years ago, vast shortage of, of students in this area. Um, and then I've seen it begin to turn around, actually. So there's a hint of optimism now. And the reason it turns around is because of things like this. Because you can show, you can, I mean, these the students here, you know, they're looking around and they're, whatever they're interested in, they'll see something that they think, I could do that. There's a job. I mean, you look at these aircraft, you know, the fact that you can go and, and, and speak to one of the engineers who says, well, this is my job, I maintain these aircraft. And there'll be someone, there'll be some student here who says, that's what I'd like to do. And, and then, you know, there's, but then at the other end of the scale, there's designing things like the Eurofighter or the Typhoon. There, there's Rolls Royce engines are here, there's Bloodhounds, you know, which is just pure engineering excellence and a lot of bottle actually to drive something that fast. So, so you see everything. The Red Arrows, I think, in, in particular, um, you see, I was talking to some of the students, and obviously they've grown up seeing these aircraft, because I said to them, have you seen the Red Arrows before? Like, of course we have, we see them every day, going practicing. You know, th that's inspirational. And we often forget that, I think. We forget the value of, of inspirational things. So, so the Red Arrows are you know, world famous, and a great thing for, for brand Britain, as it were, across the world. But also we forget that they're an astonishingly inspiring thing. For, for these students. And you don't have to, you know, people often go on, they go on to me about that, well, how much does CERN cost? How much does a Large Hadron Collider cost? But, you know, you'll hear it about how much do these display teams cost? Do we, well, actually, you inspire one or two of these students and what they put back into the economy. There's a big problem. A lot of engineers are getting on a bit, right? Not here, actually. The young people who are working on the planes are quite young. But in general, there's a big demographic problem with engineering. It's the same with science, because we've had a dip for, for the last 10 or 20 years and it's turning around now but what, what I say to these students is well this is a tremendous opportunity because you're, you're in a country in an economy where you are needed and there's a shortage of people like you so my advice is pick what you're interested in just find something that interests you and then go and do that and you will have a job for life doing something that's interesting. I agreed to do this a few months ago because I really believe in science, technology, engineering and maths, you know, STEM, STEM subjects, but I didn't expect it to be this much fun for me, so it's great. We need to find a million engineers in the next 10 years in the UK, I and mean, that's astonishing, isn't it? And that's really important because we lost engineering didn't we, in the 80s and 90s, it was decimated, um, sorry, uh, manufacturing. Um, so a lot of the factories that, we, that used to be the mainstay of the British economy have now gone. But what, we, what we have is brain power, design power, engineering, design. That's something that we, we are world leaders in. Um, and we really need to hang on to that. And that's why events like this are really, really important, because we'll only hang on to that if we inspire these youngsters, if we get them off their Xboxes, which are great and have been designed by someone. But and you know, onto hands-on projects, design concepts. If we give them the idea that if they want to work in the aerospace industry or in the motorsports industry, they can. Like literally, they can write their own career right here. And all they've got to say is, do you know what? I'd like to do that. Literally, that's it. Everything else falls into place. Yeah, they are. I mean, I, I was very inspired by the Red Arrows when I was a youngster living in Woodall and the, and the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight and the, uh, the Phantoms as they were then in the 80s coming overhead. My school Gartree was right next to RAF Coningsby. There's something very, very, very inspiring about aviation and aircraft. I think, I think they are the pinnacle of engineering and science and technology as, as you know, machines and the people that fly them and make them uh, airworthy, the engineers, the blues as we call them because they wear blue, blue overalls. They're also very inspiring people. So I was, on, on a metaphorical level, I was very inspired by growing up in the...